We've just heard the most wonderful conference on Elizabeth of Bohemia here in Paderborn, and I'm talking to one of the principal organizers of that conference, Sabrina Ebersmeyer, who teaches at Copenhagen University. Sabrina, um, I wonder why you think Elizabeth is an important figure, and indeed how you came to be interested in her. Yeah, um, that's uh, the most important <laughs> question, obviously, right? Why, do, why are we doing the things we do in philosophy? So being a philosopher, I'm interested in Elizabeth, I think, as most of my colleagues are, first and foremost, because of her letter exchange with René Descartes and the very interesting and sharp critical comments uh, she makes on Descartes' philosophy. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, uh, yeah, very fascinating. Um, especially as in this letter exchange, as we all know, uh, Descartes also is forced to elaborate his views and comes up with new insights or with new suggestions concerning his philosophy that we don't know about otherwise. So that's, uh, that's the one thing uh, why I think this uh, Elizabeth as a philosopher is so in, um, important. Uh, but the other thing is um, being a female philosopher myself, I think it's... Uh, um, important for us also to have uh, um, historical figures who could serve as role models or uh, who could uh, provide us with um, yeah, exemplars of what it is to be a female philosopher. So given that Elizabeth was considered in her time uh, to be one of the most learned women in the whole of Europe, I think it's uh, so important to keep this also in our uh, collective memory, mm. especially in history of philosophy, and say, well, this history of philosophy, th there we had this sharp and intelligent uh, philosophizing woman, and that's why I think she's also so important, because she's such an exemplary figure. And you've decided to translate her into German, um, which is interesting. Um, I, I wonder whether, as a uh, a philosopher, uh, you found any further insights through that process of translation? Because obviously that would have involved a much more attentive, um, a detailed attention to the text, I um, imagine. Yeah, that's true. So um, the idea to translate the letter exchange came while I was engaged in a project about the role of emotions in early modern rationalism, especially in Descartes, Spinoza and Leibniz. So. Um, the letter exchange with Elizabeth figures so prominently and then it's so odd that we did not have any <laughs> German translation at mm -hmm. that time of this letter exchange. So in German you can find, I don't know, 20 uh, translations of the meditations of, or of the discours mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, none of Elizabeth's letters. Mm -hmm. So there had been an old translation, a German translation of uh, some of Descartes' letters, but none of Elizabeth's mm -hmm. letters. So I thought also for teaching reasons and everything to um, implement the research one is doing also in teaching, it would be great to have a German translation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started to work on it. And that, yeah, kind of caught me up <laughs> with the figure uh, of Elizabeth as a historical person and also encouraged me to um, start a research project together with a colleague on Elizabeth's a remaining uh, correspondence, mm. which is not that much known. Uh, but uh, during our research on that, uh, we came across more than 470 letters uh, written to and from Elizabeth. Um, uh, we are going now to yeah, publish uh, these results. Um, but so, yeah, so working uh, on this translation um, caught me up and being um, engaged with a historical figure, um, um, a woman philosopher being in her time um, involved in many uh, debates and questions. And while translating, um, I found it uh, particularly challenging to um, uh, give justice to the fact that these letters are on the one hand highly um, uh, rhetorical and artificial um, letters, and on the other hand, they are also the expression of a very, very intimate relationship, I would say, between Elizabeth and Descartes. So both of them commit themselves very much. And, and that was a challenge <laughs> um, uh, to uh, kind of to make this visible in the German translation, but that was also something that I uh, or some insight uh, about this correspondence that I gained more when working so closely with the text. Mm. Yes, of course that opens up new themes in, in Elizabeth, doesn't it, to, yeah. to look at the later letters. Of course, most people who come to this, uh, to the Descartes Elizabeth letters, come from a background in early modern philosophy, very much centered on Descartes and 
and uh, later philosophy, but you have a background in Renaissance philosophy, and I wondered whether this, um, do you think this uh, uh, affects your perspective on it at all? Uh, yeah, I do think, um, because I was uh, engaged for uh, many years now, st um, still am, in uh, the writings of female Italian humanists and uh, studying their text and sources, because it's so fascinating that, of course, there were also learned women during the Middle Ages, but they pop up in a considerable number with the humanist movement. So the humanist movement as being an intellectual movement outside universities, they kind of opened up uh, the, uh, the possibilities or opportunities for women to participate in the world, learned world as they were excluded otherwise from the uh, formal education uh, that would be offered at universities. So. Um, I was interested in this question, how could women participate in the learned world? And we had all these, uh, well, beginning with Christine de Pisson, and, uh, but also Isotta Nogarola, Laura Cereta, Cassandra Fidele. There were so many women writers and their, their means to participate was uh, primarily letter writing. So there is this continuity and this yes, tradition from, from yeah. women uh, writing letters to uh, famous uh, male correspondents and thus gaining access to this learned world. Yes, well that's very interesting because it's, it opens up the uh, idea of, of a continuity mm. of, of women's tradition yeah. instead of just being tacked on to the, yeah. the male position. Thank you very yeah. much, Sabrina. That's well, most interesting. It was a pleasure talking to yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah.